you know, we were introducing some doctors at Merritt Health, and some of the surgeons and the specialties that they have. Well, today this is really exciting because they got a brand new lab here that uh, they're really excited about. It's their cath lab. And Dr. Michael Hogan is the vascular and endovascular surgeon here. How are you, Dr. Hogan? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. If you would please tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, uh, well, I'm a uh, married father that uh, has been here on the coast for the last seven years with mm -hmm. the base, recently retired from the military. Thank you. Uh, I was, thank you, sir. Uh, performing uh, similar services over at Keyser Air Force Base and have transitioned over to this opportunity at a wonderful facility and um, asked if I would come over here and start up the vascular surgery program. What, I mean, you, you were a general surgeon yes, uh, with, with Keesler. What made you want to get into the vascular surgeon field? So when I was a resident, I was interested in cardiothoracic surgery and um, with the advent of all the endovascular techniques, um, some of the uh, surgical opportunities kind of decreased a little bit. Peripheral vascular surgery actually took a different uh, turn and we actually got involved with more endovascular procedures, mm -hmm. things being done in a room like a cath lab rather than an operating room. Right. And I was able to encompass a lot more treatments, a lot more different types of patients. So rather than just focusing in one area, we're actually truly focused on the entire individual. Well, we met some of, the, some of the wonderful surgeons here at Merritt Health in Biloxi. Exactly what does a vascular and endovascular surgeon do? I know it has to do with the heart and things like that. But well, actually, that's a common misconception. That's really? one area we don't work on. We actually don't work on the heart. That's reserved. I'm, I'm thinking cardiovascular. Yes, sir. And, and that's what a lot of folks think. So those surgeons that actually work on the heart are usually uh, cardi cardiothoracic surgeons or mm -hmm. cardiologists in the case of an endovascular type procedure. Right. Um, we work on everything outside of the heart and outside of the brain. Any other blood vessel in your bodies, arteries, veins, uh, the lymphatic system, we're involved with. And what's exciting now is the way that we've been conventionally trained since about 2000 is not only can we handle these patients in the operating room, we can come to a place like this and perform procedures that used to be massively invasive and require, you know, days and days in the ICU and the hospital. And we're doing similar treatments minimally invasively. Uh, and folks are commonly leaving the following day with band-aids from the insertion really? sites. So it's, it's, the technology is amazing. We're able to operate on sicker and sicker patients who were told previously, oh, you're too sick for surgery. You know, we can take care of those folks now. Well, I thought, thought it was fascinating, you know, talking to the uh, colorectal surgeons here recently when well, we saw the Da Vinci uh, unit that they have here at Merritt Health yes, and sir. how finite that is. But, yes, and, and now looking at this, this is quite a piece of equipment that you have here. Yes, sir. This is, this is very amazing. We're very fortunate to have this. Uh, I think this is probably one of the finest facilities here in the Gulf Coast. Mm -hmm. um, you can see there's an example here of a recent case uh, that we performed. Now this is a person's aorta. You can see their kidneys on either side there in the red. That's the aorta coming down with that large bulge in it. Okay. And then the vessels going down through their extremities. Those bulges are very dangerous. Uh, if people don't know they have them, which oftentimes they don't, mm -hmm. they can rupture and typically cause immediate death. Limitation. You can imagine if your aorta wow. ruptures, you basically bleed to death before you can get to a hospital for treatment. So we had have screening programs we're able to identify these these are very important these screening programs and you can see uh, the image on the left was the actual image from our cath lab where we went up with one of these small catheters in the endograft and we're able to repair this aneurysm and now that aneurysm is excluded from the possibility of rupture the patient was able to go home the following day minimal pain senior and follow up, very happy. So these are the types of things that a lab like this gives us the opportunities to do. It's much more fessel to be able to do something like that in a cath lab versus an OR. It's a little more cumbersome mm -hmm. because of the type of equipment you have to bring in here. Um, but we're able to, to achieve these kinds of results. Patients don't require general anesthesia. So- uh, Really, it's all local? Local and just a little bit of sedation to take the edge off. Kind of that twilight sleep. Absolutely, the, yes sir. Now. How, I mean, looking at this, how did that person find out about this? I mean, did there, was there symptoms? Yeah, that's a great question. So oftentimes there's not symptoms. Because when, I would hate to know that I have something like that inside of me now, and all of a sudden walk out the door and bam, drop dead. Yes, sir. I mean, that's and scary to think about that. That's why we recommend screening. Uh, about 20% or one in five Americans have uh, peripheral artery disease, which includes carotid disease, which if silent could suddenly become symptomatic and cause a stroke. Triple A's, aneurysms uh, like this in the aortas, mm -hmm. critical limb ischemia. So 
most times things like carotids and aortas, patients don't have symptoms typically. They have risk factors. Things like diabetes, age greater than 50, Well, there you high go. Blood pressure, Mississippi's number one history. in diabetes and obesity. So yes, sir. there's some factors right there. Yes, sir. Now, yes, sir. Um, I, I guess, if, is it, can it be hereditary? Yes, sir. There's a familial component. And we usually recommend that you discuss with your primary care doctors, yes. which are so important, offering these screenings to the patient. And the good news is the screenings, most of them are covered by most folks' insurance mm -hmm. um, if they have the risk factors. They're pain-free. You come in, it's a simple ultrasound study um, where we can identify these conditions before they become symptomatic. Someone who was to have symptoms from something like this would be considered a surgical emergency. Um, that would mean an impending rupture, and we'd certainly want to treat those folks very early. Someone with carotid disease that's having symptomatics or then having uh, many strokes, and so we'd want I've to treat that. I've had one of those. That. Yes, sir. That hits you just like that. You don't know it. Absolutely, and it's scary. And again, if we can identify these ahead of time before some of the permanent damage is done, people can have their treatment, come into the hospital, go home the next day, and basically, you know, we'd want to continue to, you know, survey them, yeah. but we would mitigate that risk. What do you see in the future? So we have some very exciting things we have planned for this wonderful room. Uh, the first one is fenestrated uh, endovascular aneurysm repair. We have to, we, as you can imagine, we can't cover the arteries to the kidneys, which you can see coming out on either side of the aorta, mm -hmm. which limits who can and can't get that type of a procedure. But now there's something called fenestrated grafts, uh, which only certain hospitals are allowed to do. We're gonna be one of them, where we can actually extend the graft up beyond that and basically branch out into those branches. Another exciting thing is something called TCAR, T-C-A-R, which is an exciting, again, minimally invasive carotid, which mm -hmm. halves the stroke risk of the procedure itself. So it really mitigates all this risk. It's de designed for very high-risk people who mm -hmm. otherwise couldn't have surgery. And we're going to be bringing that here. We'll only be the second hospital in Mississippi to offer that That's procedure. awesome. You got a team standing I back do. behind me. I, I want to bring them forward here, here and yes, let you sir. introduce the team that so, you have so here while we have a minute I left. Got, I got Brian, Shane, Ryan, and Jeremy. Jeremy is our tech who helps me and keeps me uh, on task and helps us with the table and, and, and getting the patients ready and accessed and providing all the wires and recommendations during uh, the procedure. Shane is one of our uh, nurses here, helps us take care of the patients, keeps them sedated, mm -hmm. monitors them hemodynamically uh, uh, during the case. Ryan uh, similarly does the same thing as support. Many of these patients, as you can imagine, these risk factors are very sick. Mm -hmm. They have concomitant heart disease and things like that, and they monitor them. And Brian is in charge of everything. He helps us make sure we have all the equipment we need for the case. He also scrubs in and assists with the cases. He's got many, many years of experience as a tech. Dr. Michael Hogan, thank you so much. A thank pleasure. You, sir. It's a pleasure. Really thank educational. You. I love doing some of these. So if you're, uh, you know, if, you go to your primary physician if you think you may have uh, you know a, a part of this in your family history you'll be in good hands here at Merritt Health Biloxi